4484. This is the fastest ever 100 freestyle that's been swum. So let's take a look at it. Hi, Brenton here from Effortless Swimming. If you're new to this channel, I'm a swim coach based in Australia and we run clinics and camps here in Australia and overseas as well. And we also uh, do a lot of coaching online with swimmers and triathletes in terms of their technique and helping them swim faster. Now, in today's episode, we are looking at Carl Chalmers. He recently broke the 100 freestyle short course world record in a time of 44.84, which is 0.1 of a second faster than the existing world record. So we're gonna have a look at this swim and we'll break down a couple elements that you might be able to perhaps take something away from it and uh, we'll see you know, what helped him have such a great swim. So let's take a look at it. Now, in terms of the start, we'll just skip to the start here. I know we haven't really broken down much with the start because I work primarily with triathletes and open water swimmers, but I know a lot of you are doing pool competitions and uh, my background was as a, as a competitive swimmer. So one of the, a couple sort of key points that we try to achieve here with the start is this. Now, number one, it's eyes should be looking straight down when you begin. We want to have the arms all pretty much straight with a little bit of tension in them, ready to when the gun goes, ready to then pull yourself forwards on the block. So the arms should be straight, not really tense, but just that little bit of tension so that you're ready to initiate the, the start there. The other thing that you'll typically find is that the back foot or back leg is it is at 90 degrees all right so back leg at about 90 degrees there uh, and you'll see that consistent with most of these guys here you know this one's probably a little bit less right there it's probably about you know, 80 degrees but um typically aiming for for 90 degrees with that back leg we also want to try and lift the hips up bring the hips up a bit and when you do that you'll feel a little bit of tension in that hamstring in that back leg and again it's just primed you ready to go when that gun goes off the other thing that uh, we typically go for is a, a reasonably straight back. So what we want to avoid, and we see this with a lot of younger kids when they first begin to you know, do track starts, they're too hunched. We want to try and keep this reasonably straight through the back. Um, and you'll really see it like there, for example, um, with a lot of these guys. Now, the other thing is obviously the head's just over the, the block with the eyes looking down. Um, and that way your center of gravity is like it's, it's fairly even here so that when the gun goes, you can just get off the block and get going. Because if you're leaning really far back, then it's going to take that little bit longer to move forwards. Now, this is, um, they used to sort of do it a little bit differently. When they didn't have the kicker, so there's like a step here at the back of the block. When we didn't have the kicker, you would have to lean a little bit further back so that you didn't fall in. Um, and just so that you could sort of get a little bit more drive and power off the block. But because this kick is here, that provides you with a bit more stability, but allows you to sort of drive from that back foot without having to lean back so much. And then here we go. So to initiate the start, it's usually sort of like the, you'll grip onto the blocks, pull your center of gravity or pull your weight forwards, and then diving forwards here. Now you'll see with majority of these guys not all of them from what i can tell but the majority is will then look forwards almost at where they they, they want to go where they want to land and i know the quality is not great but they look forwards the arms come behind the back or higher than the back almost like you know the wings coming through and then they move the hands back down and into a streamlined position here and this has sort of changed in the last couple of years like um, it used to just sort of come through without coming, bringing the hands behind the back there. Now, upon entry, we obviously want to be streamlined. So one hand on top of the other, keeping this straight and then having everything very well aligned as you enter. And after that, we want to make sure that the feet and the legs stay together as you finish that, that uh, entry through. So everything should pretty much follow um, the rest of the body in. Now with swimmers who don't get this as well 
some of the common things we see here is either the feet are still apart, so the legs are apart, or the trajectory of that entry is just, it's not that good. You know, some people will go too deep and they have to make their way back up. Some people will go too flat. So we just wanna be able to make the most of that, that dive by getting the right trajectory, where it will then almost sort of shoot you upwards and, um, and keep the speed going. So that's the start. Now, in terms of the technique here with, with a lot of these guys, there's such a wide spread of, of, of technique if we're just looking at the recovery alone. So you'll see that the swimmer here essentially got a straight arm recovery. And we sort of looked at this before, there's many different styles, it just depends on what's best suited for you. So this swimmer here, he's got a, a fairly straight arm recovery coming over high. Um, and for a lot of sprinters, that works really nicely for them. Now, Kyle's a little bit different. He's got more of a, like a traditional recovery, and meaning like he's elbows up, hands out to the side. He's not coming with that straight arm recovery. And again, it's just whatever suits you best. I like this entry here too. He gets the fingers in first. He's almost at full extension out there, but just keeps that elbow like just above the water when that hand enters. And if you've seen some of our previous videos on say sprinters, we know we like to enter that little bit further forwards compared to middle to long distance swimmers you know, for most of the time. Um, so we don't want to land flat with the palm. The fingers will still go first, but only just. So let's play this through. Now his, his underwater work here is like, that's a huge, that's a huge, um, huge gain in this underwater. Like you'll see where he pushes off. Seems like he gains a bit of extra, extra distance on the pack there with that underwater work. So I think that was a really good turn that we saw. Now we do get um, a bit of an underwater shot coming up here, and we'll just have a look at um, have a look at it. Now what I like here, he he's got a little bit of like a, a bounce or a little bit of a lope in the stroke and he comes up pretty high in the water. Like he's riding super high and I'll show you this towards the end, um, but he's got a monster kick, such a strong kick. And it's um, like he's got, he's got this propeller out the back and he's just like sitting super high in the water. And obviously that's gonna reduce the drag quite a bit compared to if he was sitting like uh, really low. Now this is the underwater shot. Let's have a look uh, sort of close up here. And we've looked at Kyle's stroke before with some sort of slower footage that we've seen just from training. Um, and this is pretty, pretty similar to what we were seeing in that footage. So here we get like really nice position to start the catch. Hand and forearm moves down. And we get, I, I like this position here where we get the upper arm sort of out to the side. Elbow sort of, it's not really close to the surface. It's below it a bit, but it's out to the side. Now, what a lot of swimmers tend to do here is they have the opposite. And I'm talking like, like your amateur, um, amateur swimmer or triathlete, sometimes they'll be like the upper arms down here, but we've got to have it out to the side a little bit. So the elbow sort of more pointing out there. So he's out there and then the hand and forearm is working as one paddle. So this wrist is straight, hand and forearm is together using this whole part of his arm here. And the first part of the stroke, so from here, from here to here, that's what we call the out sweep. So the hand moves slightly away from the center. So out in that direction, a little bit, not a huge amount. We don't want to go out really wide, but just a little bit. Then once the hand passes the shoulder here, we start to see a bit of an in sweep, meaning the hand will move in towards the center. See it through there, in towards the center, closer to the body through that second half of the stroke there. And the other thing I like here, and this is something that I have to, well, I work on a lot with people who uh, or in our stroke analysis coaching is you'll see the palm of the hand there facing back, facing back, facing back all the way to the hip until the very end where it then turns into the body. So the palm of the hand at the very end will then turn inwards just to help the exit. But aside from that, we want to press back just past the hip and keep the palm facing behind you all the way through. And that's what provides that propulsion because you've got that surface area working for you as you go through. So it's very, yeah, it's really good. You'll see the same thing on this side. All right, so on his, uh, on his right arm, great position to start the catch. Got fingers below wrist, wrist below elbow. That arm's directly in line with his shoulder. So he's swimming on the train tracks. If you've 
seen us uh, talk about that before. Then the hand and forearm moves down, gets a really nice catch. We have this out sweep, in sweep happens here. And then again, he just finishes just past the hip and um, keeps that palm facing behind him. So it looks really, really good through there. Now again, we just see this sort of um, close up view where we can't see a whole lot, but we'll just keep moving through. Now this, have a look at how high he comes out of the water. So one thing he actually does is he sort of looks forwards a bit before he turns his head to the side to breathe. Now, there's a lot of swimmers that I work with where we try and reduce this or eliminate it a bit because I do see this happen sometimes where people are looking too far forwards, their lower back arches, it drops their hips and it ends up slowing them down. But that said, it can be a really valid technique for a lot of swimmers. Um, and depending on what event you're doing, depending on which stage of the, the event you're in, um, it can it can vary. Like sometimes we'll see with like a 1500 meter swimmer, the last 50 meters where they're like sprinting essentially, they will have that sort of technique a little bit more where it's like look up and turn. So um, it's not necessarily a bad thing all the time. It just depends on on the person and the event. Um, but you can see he's he just sits super high in the water here. And as I said, he's got that monster kick. All right, we get the turn. I like this shot here, this is really good. So you can see here, all right, that's where the eyes go slightly forwards. Lifts up a bit, really throws that hand forwards. We just get those fingertips coming in first, like just almost at full extension. So it's really like lunging forwards in a way, getting great length through the, through the torso. See how high that, yeah, that head is? He's still like, he's still got that split vision, like one goggle in, one goggle out or looking directly to the side, but you'll see he's sitting up you know, nice and high in the water. And this is consistent across, like you see this with Kate Libdecki uh, as well, similar sort of view that we get. See it with Kate Campbell as well. Uh, so it's, it's not like you need to be sitting really low in the water or have your head completely submerged. Like it's just not the case. You can actually have that head up a little bit higher as long as you're looking in the right direction. Now here we see this recovery. So the hand exits just past the hip. As he comes through, the elbow ends up sort of pointing mostly to the sky through this, this initial part here. So you can see the elbow pointing up in that direction. Hands out to the side, brings it through as he goes over. Again, we just get those fingers coming, coming in just first. All right, we'll keep that plane through. And another thing I haven't sort of talked about here, but he's breathing every two strokes aside from the end where it's like the last maybe six or eight strokes, he stops, stops breathing, puts the head down and sprints into the wall. And that's what you want to do if you're swimming any kind of race is put your head down, don't breathe for the last at least five meters. Um, but aside from that, he's breathing every two strokes. So again, like it's, it's okay to breathe every two strokes. You don't need to breathe every three just because it's meant to be better. Um, great thing to train to be able to breathe bilaterally and obviously he can breathe bilaterally um, but when you're racing it's okay to breathe every two strokes nothing wrong with that at all so that's um, terrific swim there and I know we couldn't break down as much technique as we normally would um, but we're sort of limited with the vision that we've got here but uh, I just wanted to show this video because it's an amazing swim uh, and I'll play it um, I'll play a bit more footage after after this, but um, go and check it out for yourself. Amazing swim, world record, the fastest one we've ever seen. And um, just great to see that we're still continuing to get world records after the suit era, where they had the full body suits and basically it was nearly every world record is broken at the world champs in I think 2009, very close to it. But now we're starting to see these world records get broken without the suits, which goes to show that people are training smarter, better strength training, better recovery, uh, having to improve technique, having to um, be, be better with that and come up with better methods to train. So that's what I'm really enjoying about, well, I mean, it's like 13 years after 2009, but um, you know, we're really starting to see some, some big improvements. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, please like and subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. We do videos like this pretty much every week. And if you're a triathlete or a swimmer wanting to improve your technique, then uh, check out our Feedback Friday videos, which I'll put a link to below. That's where we look at 
average swimmers and see what they're doing that they can change to become better swimmers. So thanks again for watching. See you next week.